Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. So you probably saw the intro to this video. Well, I'm gonna go through the first things I'm gonna do. I always like taking care of the mechanical problems uh, before doing any servicing or any type of cosmetic uh, repairs on a scooter. A lot of my customers, they want me to fix them up cosmetically, then they kind of are considering uh, mechanical repairs or the registration. It should be the complete opposite. You should make sure that the registration and title, everything's correct on the scooter before you go any further. And then any major mechanical issues should be resolved. Figure out if it's something that's catastrophic, which I'm pretty certain it's not. It's just some bearings in the water pump and exhaust gasket. So let's get right to it. Um, gonna pull the floor mat up, pull these crash bars off. I'll leave them off because all these parts I'm gonna put some elbow grease into. We'll clean them all up before they get put back on the scooter here. Didn't look too bad, but it's definitely had a mat on it for a while. And this is a crash bar that we no longer sell. So I got the exhaust removed and the bushing looks pretty good. This is a graphite bushing that kind of isolates the vibrations from the muffler and the engine from the cylinder head. Um, it's pretty important, but every once in a while you'll end up with a major problem with the exhaust leak. So the header sometimes will break, especially if you're using an aftermarket exhaust. Um, but this header is not broken. It's a stub header. I'll go ahead and pull that out and show it to you. And the problem with it is there's only one of the two studs holding it onto the cylinder head. So one of those studs is broken in the cylinder head. It's quite an ordeal to replace that stud, but I'll probably do a whole separate video on servicing that exhaust stud because here at our service department, I've had people bring scooters from pretty far away with a broken stud here and there. It's not too common. Uh, usually scooters that are ridden hard on the freeway or if they have an aftermarket exhaust system is typically uh, where I find a broken stud you know, situation. Or the muffler was just incorrectly installed, like it came loose or wasn't torqued correctly. Uh, sometimes it puts extra strain on that header joint and will break one of the studs. So at this point, I'm just working by feel. I'm getting the last remaining nut off for the header and there's only one nut holding it. The header itself is in good shape. We'll go ahead and disconnect the O2 sensor, get that out of the way. So before removing the engine, we're gonna go ahead and drain the engine oil and the coolant. Um, check out the water pump. I'm gonna pull the whole motor out for this job, especially considering the, head, the replacement of the stud is a very difficult job to do a successful drill from underneath here. Here in our service center, we do it quite a bit. Uh, we have the aid of a couple scissor lifts. We partly remove the motor to get the, the subframe, which is what mounts the motor to it. And that's how we're able to do it in our service department uh, in order to get the job done quickly. But I wanna set you up for success. So I'm gonna show you how to do it and we're gonna pull the motor out. And it's not all that hard to pull the motor out, but do wanna get the fluids drained out of it so we don't have a big mess of fluids as we're pulling the motor out. Go ahead and remove the oil drain. Doesn't look too bad. Pull the strainer out. All right, the three water pump covers, we're gonna go ahead and remove the water pump cover because it's gotta be removed anyways when we dismantle this water pump. Uh, sometimes I do a coolant flush, I just remove the lower line, replace the clamp. We'll end up cutting that clamp. And also you have a little bit easier control of the coolant flow. But these three Phillips screws are rather tight and the solution to remove a stubborn Phillips screw before you strip the head is to use an impact screwdriver. So the way this works is you turn it the direction that you, know, you turn it counterclockwise that we're gonna unscrew it. You hold it, you grasp it, and put pressure on it and give, it, give the screw the end of it a, a strike and it's got a cam inside that will put pressure. And it's a little more controlled than using an electric impact.
And I've got that one loose. And they're very handy to have for servicing two wheelers without the need of any power. So I have those all loose at this point. Just go back to a regular screwdriver, probably loose. There might be a little bit of the gasket stuck so I can kind of wiggle things around a little bit so it's not. And there we go, we're starting to have a coolant flow. The coolant looks really good, it's been flushed in the past. And a cool thing is you just have easy control of the coolant flow by just loosening those screws. And next we'll remove the coolant cap because that'll allow, break the air in the coolant system and allow the coolant to come flowing out. And you're not gonna get all the coolant out from this point, you have some on the um, inlet on the thermostat side. So the coolant cap's rather tight. We're gonna use uh, the Scooter West Tool SN. It kinda has the perfect size pegs to, to loosen the cap. And now, now that I've broke the vacuum lock on that coolant cap, it's gonna drain the coolant. And typically I just like to go nice and slow so you don't end up with a mess of coolant you gotta wipe up. So you wanna have a pan that can at least hold a half gallon of capacity of fluid. That's the typical amount that's needed when you flush the coolant system. And the more you pull the, the coolant cap off, it'll kind of speed up until it's to a point where it's now to a trickle here. And at this point, pull all the rest of the screws off. And FYI, if you have the scooter on the center stand, you're gonna be, have a lot of difficulty getting to this upper screw. I know in the old coolant flush video where I remove this cover, I've heard comments where people say they can't get to that screw. Well, take it off the center stand and you, and it drops the front of the motor down. That's just the way the engine mount is on these scooters and makes the job much, much easier. So that's the last little bit of coolant. And water pump doesn't feel too bad. And I'll go ahead and cut these one time use clamps off. And the hose is being on here for all these years. You're gonna have to get a pick in between the hose and the water pump cover to get this return hose off. And this is the first step of removing the engines. You wanna have the coolant hoses separated. As you can see, this line has been on here for quite a long time. There's some corrosion on the aluminum water pump cover. That's all stuff that will clean up before we reinstall this. You would never just put that right over. And if you pull the coolant hose down, you're gonna get more coolant drain from the system here. Now we'll move to the top. We're gonna to disconnect the hose from the thermostat. So here's the thermostat housing and underneath there is the thermostat. This is your hose that the hot water exits the cylinder head. And you can get a pick underneath this, these one-time use hose clamps. And oftentimes you could just pop the tab or like what I did with the lower one, I just went ahead and cut it off. And once you remove them, they're, they're no longer usable, so they're trash. And I would recommend putting a higher quality, like German-made worm gear clamp. You don't want the cheap ones that are sold at an auto parts store for replacements. We also sometimes do re, you know, use those uh, one-time use clamps. And you see coolant still coming out. I'll make sure the pan is underneath here to catch anything from the front of the motor. And typically this hose is much easier to get off the, this is no corrosion being a plastic housing. And at this point, I'll put the coolant cap back on and I'll put some compressed air through that line just to get the residual coolant out of the system. 
so I don't have a continuous drip of coolant. And at that point, we've got most of the coolant out of the system here. There's still gonna be some remaining drops. You can also remove the bleeder screw to allow some of the excess coolant that's in the cylinder and cylinder head to drain out. From under, underneath the seat of the bucket, there's gonna be several wiring and hose connections that we're gonna disconnect before we proceed. One thing I like to do before um, we pull a motor is typically clean it. I didn't do that, kind of breaking my own golden rule here, but I'm gonna pull the motor out, I'm gonna wheel it into my pressure wash room and clean it after, and we'll clean the engine bay. Kind of got a head start on myself. And there's one other thing I like to do is there's several points where there's zip ties that secure cables and wiring. And the way I indicate that there's a zip tie there is I usually put two silver marks with like a paint pen you know, anywhere where a zip tie would go and you want, sometimes want to clean it off just so when you reassemble it, you'll know where all those zip ties go. Another thing you would want to do if this is your first time taking one of these apart is also take some photos, detailed photos of underneath and you might print them out or just have them on a mobile phone or a tablet where they're handy to look at again. You know, but it's pretty important that these zip ties are all installed in the same locations when, um, you know, pretty much securing the, the breather hose. This hose is pretty hard, so I'll probably actually replace that hose. But the zip ties just give you a good indication of how this stuff is routed. So these clamps that secure the wiring, usually you can get a screwdriver between the two tabs or your finger, and then you could go ahead and lift those, those clamps. There's also a zip tie right there. Again, you can put a mark, and once we have all these zip tie locations marked, we'll go ahead and cut them all out. And of course, you need to replace them. Not that big a deal. Um, some of these you probably could leave alone, but I'm just gonna get them all out of the way just to make it the easiest possible means of moving everything around. This one has a sheathing on it, I'll show you. And you could reuse that piece of sheathing. Cut the Yeah, make sure you don't cut into the wiring. And now we can separate some of the wiring. So this is your positive terminal for the starter. It has a quick disconnect right from the starter relay right there. I need a Phillips screwdriver. This is a the screw that secures both the main wiring to the ECU throttle body and also the fuel line. Uh, the, the 300s have a single fuel line. If you're working on a 250, you're gonna have a double fuel line system with a return. And sometimes you put the screws back in the same locations. Um, with any of these, one-time use clamps. We'll cut them out of the way, but I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling connections. So this fuel injector connection, you gotta be, take extra care. You pull, push the wire in and that's what releases the connection. For the fuel line, make sure you're wearing safety glasses. You are gonna lose some fuel if the scooter has run. On these older ones, on both sides. So you have a white button at the 12 o'clock position and then also at the six o'clock position. So push the fuel line towards the injector and push those two buttons and carefully twist as you're pulling. And you sometimes could put a rag over it. I'm actually not gonna have a rag because you'll see some of the fuel that will pop out of the, the line. So see it just dripped a little bit. There wasn't too much bleed pressure there. So that's your fuel line. You have a engine temperature sensor and you could, I just pulled the boot away and you got to get your finger or you could get a pick, like a curved pick underneath the, the tab under there. It's very, very fragile. It's just exposed to a lot of heat. So make sure you don't damage it as you're removing it. And all I was doing is getting the pick right underneath this little tab here. And that's how I release that connector without damaging it. Then you have 
the main injection connector. The fuel line's gonna drip a little bit. It's probably best if you don't have a full tank of gas because sometimes you can end up with a siphon and, or if the fuel pump for, for any reason energized, you would end up with a lot of fuel. So you gotta pull this boot back and underneath this boot is a tab that secures this connection. Very critical that that tab's there because if the tab's not there, it's not gonna have a very secure connection. And you pretty much separated all the electronic brains of the scooter from the, the wiring harness of the, the frame here. We have a couple more connections. You have one more zip tie that I'm going to cut. And we're going to remove this, this little cover here, which was found, I think, on 2011. And later, they added this little cover. And you have more of these tabs that secure the connections. And we're going to have two connections that we're going to disconnect underneath this cover. So right here is your this is your crank position sensor and oil pressure light connection. We have a tab right here that's kind of holding the wiring. And there's a, a tab that holds this in place. And you can shift the connector forward to dislodge that. And then this connector has a tab in the very front. And I'll reach to push the, the small button and give the connector a wiggle and it will pull right out. We're going to separate the throttle body. I'll probably leave the throttle body with the cables connected and leave that with the frame. And I have two more hoses to disconnect. So the throttle body, you'll need a flat blade screwdriver and a Phillips. So the joint that goes to the air cleaner. And We'll get a flat blade screwdriver to remove that frontmost connection. And we'll have all these items all degreased and cleaned up. I may even replace that intake manifold. We'll do some further inspection when we have the motor out of the scooter. Go ahead and pull the throttle body towards the back of the scooter. And we'll get, get a flat screwdriver underneath this rubber boot towards the front. And separate it from the air box. We'll probably do some throttle body cleaning while we have this all separated. We'll take a clean rag, we're gonna push it into that intake. And these are rather sharp diagonal pliers and from Nipex that can cut through these stainless steel clamps. It's rather um, difficult to cut with just inexpensive clamps. And this hose is like a rock. So we'll go ahead and replace that hose when we reassemble and install the motor. And the last hose we have is this evaporative emissions line. It comes off the intake manifold. And it goes to a carbon canister that captures vapors from the fuel tank when it's stationary. So it's part of the emissions control system, doesn't really affect any of the performance of the scooter. And if you have difficulty pushing a hose, if you can't pull a hose off, you could push it off usually, because with barbs, they're kind of like the Chinese finger trap. They get tighter as the hose pulls on the barb. So if you push the hose off, you're gonna have more success getting the hose off. And even this hose has some wear in it so, and some cracking. So we'll probably replace that hose before we put, put the motor in there. Might as well take care of all the air leaks because if you have a scooter that stalls and has problems, it could all be related to um, air leaks in the intake manifold, the hoses. We have another tab for the uh, coolant line that I'm disconnecting. We'll also, we can get access to that from the left left side cover as well. Get that out of the way. And then here's our ground strap. Let 
And when you reinstall the scooter, it's very critical that you reconnect the ground strap because oftentimes the scooter will start, but it may end up burning wiring up in your wiring harness. That's a dangerous situation. And one way to keep the fuel line from leaking is bring it up to a high point. You know, open up the gas cap and you can zip tie the line to a point that's higher than the fuel tank and there's, it leaves it with no chance of leaking fuel. You know, once it's, there's no pressure to build up in the fuel tank if the cap's loose and if the line's up there. So this is your starter motor right underneath this air boot. There is one additional ground strap that goes from the main wiring harness. Go ahead and remove the screw and you're able to separate this last ground wire. And we'll just put, set the screw back in its place. At this point, we just need to remove the rear tire to disconnect the rear brake and we'll uh, loosen both left and right shocks and loosen the main engine pivot bolt. Lift the frame away from uh, the engine and we'll be able to pull the engine out. So we got the scooter up on the center stand. We're gonna go ahead and as if we were changing the wheel, we're gonna go remove the swing arm, the shock bolt, center bolt, and then we're gonna uh, separate the brake caliper from the brake rotor and the carrier. So we'll be just that much closer to getting the motor out of here. The cotter pin out of there. The interest of speeding things up, we'll just use an electric impact. Separate the nut, there's a spacer. Go ahead and remove the upper shock mount. A washer and the nylock nut. And at this point, you pull the shock right off. There we go. And we'll put the two fasteners off the swing arm mount, six millimeter Allen. At this point, sometimes you'll need tools to get this off. Bearing feels pretty good in there. Let's get the wheel out of the way. And of course, before we put the wheel on there, we'll polish that all up to like new condition. Pull the wheel off. There's two Allen screws on the left side. Retain the caliper. And obviously it's a perfect time to put new brake pads in it if it needs them. Eh, they're about half worn. May put some new brake pads in there. Put the screws back in place. And we have a, a couple lower belt case fasteners that we need to remove to uh, separate this uh, brake hose from the engine. And the brake caliper can just be folded away. You can put, usually put it right on the floor mat of the scooter. And the next step, we're gonna go ahead and remove the air box, get this out of the way. There's gonna be three Phillips screws. The longest screw, you could either remove the side skirt or you could access it carefully right through one of these vent holes here. And then you have the two remaining screws that also attach it to that inner fender for the tire. We'll get the air box out of the way and it can go up through the under seat storage. So we'll go ahead and remove the left side shock bolt, 17 millimeter socket, and I used a 13 millimeter combination wrench. At this point, I'm gonna lift the motor and pull this bolt out. And you can see there's gonna be two spacers here in the shock. Make sure you remove those because if you move the frame around, you're going to end up losing the spacers. And at this point, we got nearly every fastener we need out to remove the engine. And this would be a perfect time to get some Ziploc bags out and keep all your hardware organized. 
So I have the front wheel clamp in a wheel chalk on this lift. I've showed how to do this without a lift in the past with some simple tools and you're gonna need some sort of scissor lift and we're gonna start. See the motor is starting to fall away. It may leak a little bit more fluids just because we're changing the angle of the motor. So at this point, you know, with the motor angle change, you could pull your air box out, get this out of the way. And we have one last fastener that we got to loosen. So this is your pivot bolt. And you're probably going to need a 17 millimeter combination wrench on the other side because it's going to spin the bolt. So we can get one bolt in for the wheel. And it just makes it easier to roll the whole engine assembly out. All right, so we're gonna carefully dro just drop the scooter down enough where it relieves pressure on this pivot bolt. It will be kind of a combination of the tire and the center stand touching down. And you'll know because you'll be able to push this bolt through. And right now, you know, it's taking quite a bit of pressure to and if you go down too far, it puts too much pressure on it. And if you go back up, it's getting pretty close. I probably just need a, just a tiny bit of pressure on the frame to hold the frame. You know, just enough. And at this point, we can take a vice grip and pull the bolt all the way through. And you'll have a spacer drop out. And at this point, the motor is now kind of loose from the frame. So we're gonna use a scissor jack and lift the frame away from the motor as we're pulling the motor out the back of the scooter. And just kind of keep an eye on all the wiring, make sure it's not snagging anything, hanging up and just keep And the last thing you're going to disconnect is your spark plug cable. You could do it from the top, but this is an easy spot to do it. And it just pops right off because you got to rock it a little bit. And at this point, the motor has been separated from the scooter. So the big problem right here is one of these two studs is broken right off inside the cylinder head. And now that we have a clear view of it, we're gonna be able to center punch that and carefully drill all the way through there and possibly use the extractor. And if we fail at that, we can drill it out and put a, a threaded insert in there. And that will be on the next video because that's a quite an involved task, extracting a broken stud. And if you're wondering what level of expertise, this would be beyond even rebuilding a motor. This is probably, you know, typically left to a professional technician or a very seasoned home mechanic. Um, but I'm gonna show you all the steps to doing that on the next video. We're also gonna get the water pump all the way off along with the transmission, do the full service. We'll clean this motor all up before we put it back in. The good thing about this motor, it doesn't look like it's leaking from the base or the head gasket. Uh, there's some residual coolant from when I pulled the lines off, but you know, I don't think there's any other pending oil leaks that need to be fixed on it. A little bit of oil grunge on the outside, but that's nothing to be too concerned about. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the exhaust gasket out. It's probably quite compromised with the, the broken stud. And oftentimes it's a copper gasket. You can just distort it with a pick or get in between the cylinder head and the gasket. So usually it takes a little bit of effort to get it out with quite a bit of prying and you obviously distort it. Go ahead and remove that exhaust gasket there. All right, so the video changed directions quite rapidly. I just did this, I didn't know what I was gonna expect. I was expecting to change out a graphite bushing and pull in the water pump cover both are totally doable with the engine in the frame. Um, but once I discovered the broken stud, I was like, you know what? This motor needs a lot of service anyways. Even though we're not gonna rebuild the motor, it's a good opportunity just to pull out the motor and you'll be able to see everything a lot easier. And since I'm refurbishing the scooter, I wanna clean this all up as well. So 
perfect opportunity to kind of change gears on what we're doing in the video and pull the motor out. So I hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something from this video. And this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego, California. So for all things Vespa, you know where to go. Vespa Motorsport for your scooter needs and online ScooterWest.com accessories and parts for both your vintage and modern Vespas. All in stock and ready to ship. See you next time.